Were you watching movies when you were 20? Yeah. <laughs> Weren't you like a part of our crew? What, the, the no movie crew? Yeah. No, I don't think I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a maverick. What did I tell my 20 year old self? It's really sad, but I can't think of anything. Um, not, not because I was perfect, but the whole journey needed to be there. Yeah. I was trying to explore different ideas. I was trying to make sense of the world. I was trying to understand what tradition was. I was desperate trying to learn Arabic. And um, in fact, when I was 20, is that when, when you... Um, yeah, that's the year that you graduate from, from university, right? 21. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thereabouts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I'd say um, waste less time. I don't know, maybe you didn't waste much time. There were definitely, you know, things that could be done better. But at the end of the day, when I look back, I think it was just a discovery. Right. I was on a very long discovery. And it's been ongoing. It's been stage by stage. There's been periods where I felt like I found what I want. Then I realized there's a whole different paradigm I have to figure out. Mm. And the discoveries brought me to where I am today. That's all that, 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 that comes to mind, really. So keep searching. I think what yeah. you're saying is, you know, what you seek is still in front of you. Yeah. Don't don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. So sometimes I, I meet twenty-year-olds who say, "Oh, you know, um, they, they, they they look at other people who, by the age of twenty, have memorized the Quran, or yeah. you know, are doing various things or pursuing path of knowledge. Yeah. And they look at themselves and they think, "Oh, it's over for me. I'm twenty. I'm too old to yeah, do any yeah, of that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the age of forty, you look back to yourself and you think, "At twenty, you're, 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 you're still a spring chicken, yeah, <laughs> isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So what I'd say to 20 year olds is, you know, don't, don't look over your shoulder at the people who've done better than you and think, I've wasted my life and, and, and give up on yourself. And never give up on yourself because there are people who start learning the Quran at the age of 60. There are, people, there are great scholars who started the path of knowledge at the age of 40. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so, you know, and this is Shaitan's biggest trick. Shaitan says, well, you've wasted your time. You haven't done X, Y and Z now. Therefore, you're good for nothing. So give up on yourself. I think it really is just about A is keep searching and B is even when you found you have to realize that there's more still in front of you. There's a hikmah of uh, Ibn al isn't it? It says, um, it says something like, uh, I can't remember how it goes now, when, when the seeker thinks he's found his, the result of his quest, mm. Then the haqiqah calls out to him, we're only a fitna, what you seek is still in front of you. I can't remember the Arabic, right, unfortunately, yeah. of the, uh, of the uh, saying. Mm. But that definitely has been, if I look back the last 20 odd years, there's been paradigm shifts that happen in periodic times. When I realize, oh, actually, I haven't got it. You know, there's another way to uh, look at things. That's been ongoing, and I hope that will continue as well. I don't think I should assume that I've got it all figured out as well. Yeah. And, and the Quran is, is one of those books that constantly reminds yep. us how little we know when we discover a new angle to something we thought we understood. I have to say the Quran is not just a book that says that, but in many ways when I look at the last, again, the last, these two decades of my life as well, I think it's how I view the Quran is what's been changing hmm? in this period. How, how you view it, how you relate to it, how you learn from it, yeah. what you can draw from it. In many ways I do feel the Quran is that life companion. Uh, as long as you keep it with you. I guess that's what I would tell my 20-year-old self. Just keep the Quran with you. Don't separate from it and it will show you the way. One thing I used to do is, see the Quran, the, the Quran is all about Allah. It's, it's His book, it's His word. And so I tried to sort of, and I thought that that's the overarching theme. And I tried to look for the other themes. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, what, what else is this about? And then, you know, it's kind of, I can't, I can't realize, it's not, it's not about anything else. It's, it's only about Allah. Just focus on that. <laughs> That's very profound, by the way, because uh, to the untrained eye, it's about lots of lots of people and histories and stories and nature and you know. Yeah. It's when you see through it and see how it's described, how everything is tied to the names of Allah, yeah. then you realize what you're saying. That's right. Because it just keeps coming back. Every every story, mm -hmm. every 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 parable, every every example ends with or begins and, and often ends with reference back to Allah, the source. 
so um, yeah so you know I used to think you know I really want to understand all the themes of the Quran and come to a point where actually there's only one theme and everything else is um, points to it that is very very deep by the way I only realize that now you you are my hero no no no, no, no. no this evening I've spent with you because I've met you at this little little intervals in we my have, life since we were teenagers yeah and it's not in any continuity I've got a memory of you in, in London I was in my degree I've got a memory with you in Jordan we've even stayed together I think in the same home for just a short period yeah. you were visiting from Syria yeah and I've got little this little snippets of memories but I've felt such a homecoming sitting with you today and learning from you and observing you and uh, very proud very happy uh, very uh, appreciative of all that you've achieved and done, I think, in these years. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the, the Arabic fun, the teaching, thing, with the, the finance, with the law. I, I often think of you and think of think of the, 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 those same thoughts about you, Mashal. Yeah. It's uh, the, you know, the, the poem. What does the poem go? مَا لَدَّتُ الْعَيْشِ إِلَّا صُحْبَةُ الْفُطَرَ هُمُ الصَّلَاطِينَ وَالسَّادَاتُ وَالْأُمَرَ There's no joy in life except the company of the fuqara, which I think North Africans use just to mean spiritual, the people who are, who are on a quest. Yeah. Yeah. They are the real sultans and the real leaders and the real commanders. And I think our life is a life of a quest. It's been little intervals. Yeah. We've just shared with each other what we're doing, what we're thinking about. Arabic has always been key as well. What we are, Arabic right. thoughts yeah. are on. Yeah, that's right. Arabic is the ongoing yeah. back, backdrop. And in the front drop, I think fiqh has been there as well. Mm -hmm. Arabic and fiqh, that's what I'd say is our uh, regular updates I, with I, each I, other. I guess so, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think it's the, it's the absolute joy of life is in, uh, is in uh, brotherhoods. It's in sohbah, it's in being with people yeah. who inspire you, who uplift you, who re reignite within you yeah. uh, what it is that you're that uh, you're about really and so I, think, I think sometimes when we think of or we were asked to think of heroes we you know we 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 think we're, we're being asked to think of who's the Hercules in my life and you know sometimes there is no Hercules and the, those people around us who've given us that uplift who've given us that start those are the heroes in our life I and mean, I would say it's my mom and dad uh, and my it's my siblings who've, who've inspired me throughout my life I mean on the, on the day that my mother passed away uh, I just I, an hour or two afterwards I stepped out of the uh, hospital uh, this is my uh, this is Whitechapel um, Royal London Hospital I stepped out through one of the back doors and there was an, a man who was a good seven eight years older than me who was walking past I didn't recognize him but he recognized me he said assalamu alaikum how's your mother and I said she's just passed away and she said he said to me she was my first Quran teacher so the, you know, my mother just passed away, and I step out of the hospital. And testament to the amal that she did when when we moved to Stepney in the 1980, in 1980, there were no masajid around. East London Mosque was the closest masjid, and it was a small porter cabin. And my mother set up the first madrasa in that area in our living room, and she taught the children of all of the local people. And that's how um, you know all of the all, all of that generation know my mother as auntie because she was the first Quran teacher to them. And so, you know, that, I grew up in that living room watching my mother educate a whole generation, teach them how to read the Quran. And so, you know, you don't need to look far to, to find a hero. The heroes are there in our own houses, our mums and our dads and our brothers and our sisters. What impact do you need to make to get into heaven? I find this very difficult to answer just because of the hadith that says entering the garden is from the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's right. And I think when you measure it by impact, you suddenly start measuring it with things that we can count and we can measure and we can put charts, you know, put charts to. So I'm unfortunately unable to answer this question. I, 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 what comes to my mind are the things that shouldn't be happening. All the hadiths that talk about the bankrupt person who comes on Judgment Day with good deeds, but he cursed and insulted and stole and did this and all his deeds vanished. So I can imagine there's a negative social impact, which will be a very big trouble. Or the hadith about the person doesn't believe his neighbor is not safe from their harm, mm -hmm. touching them. So I think negative social impact definitely shouldn't be there. That's what it feels like. 
but on the positive, I don't know what you think or what you yeah, advise I, I, on the, on the, on the positive. Say, the Quran says, uh, and fusakum first, save yourselves, wa ahlikum, and then your family. Sometimes um, we get the urge to go out and save the world, and we forget ourselves and we forget our families. And that can lead to a lot of negative impact. So you get people who are public heroes, mm. who've done great things, who've set up great charities and established institutions, but they've lost their children. And Allah doesn't ask us to do that. And so I think to get to heaven, we need to lead a balanced life. We need to be mizan in our lives. Mm. That we need to fulfill our obligations to all of those around us in concentric circles. Mm. And if everybody took care of that, then that wider social impact would take care of itself and everybody would be a hero. You know, we don't need Captain America to come and save everybody. You know, we all need to be little Captain Americas in our families and in our little communities. And that compounded will have a massive social impact. I think that's where we need to go.